of the day was submitted by the one and only Pamela Hamilton. And Pamela says this, out of suffering have emerged the strongest souls. The most massive characters are seared with scars. <laughs> How about that quote to wake up to first thing this morning? Thank you, Pamela, for that. I love that. And now for episode 830, 830 of Hashtag Rise and Grind. Good morning and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to eight and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? Dude, today is Monday. I love me some Monday. Today is Monday, March 22nd. Can you believe it? I can't believe it sometimes. Today is Monday, March 22nd, 2021. And what's crazy, and I mean absolutely crazy, is today is the very first and the very last time it will ever be. Monday, March 22nd, 2021. So I want to make sure we make the absolute most. And I do mean the absolute most of this absolutely incredible, incredible day. Listen, I hope that you had a great weekend coming off the weekend, right? Uh, I hope that you got to spend some time with, with friends. I hope you got to spend some time with family. I hope you got to maybe do something special or something memorable because we want to make every day count, right? So I hope you had a great weekend. I know I had a great weekend. I got to spend some time down in Tampa, uh, Florida. I was down in Tampa, Florida with the Furman Chevrolet group. Here's two of my favorites right here. My boy, Jose and my boy, Cody. I got to spend time with them. I got to spend some time with Laura Sanchez. She's a, she's amazing. Um, but just really got to spend some time with down there with them. They're killing it. They're killing the game, having an incredible month in the auto industry. And so I got to spend a little time with them, which was great. It was great. Now, I also got to meet the one and only Laura Wild. That's right. Clubhouse Connect, Laura Wild. She's one of our moderators on the weekends for Breakfast of Champions. She works with the NBA. I mean, this woman is just spectacular, a spectacular human. And so we got to hang out, spend some time together in Tampa, Florida. She got to meet uh, Jose and Cody and the rest of the crew. We had an awesome dinner at a Mediterranean restaurant where we ate some Greek food and people were dancing all over the place. Apparently, they party it up at uh, Mediterranean places there in Tampa. I didn't, it, it was dinner and a show. Let's just put it that way. It was awesome. And then what was really cool about this weekend is while I was at the airport, I was in a layover in Charlotte Airport. And while I was at the airport, I got to listen to Club 111. Now, Club 111, for those of you that don't know, that is our Sunday service that we do on Clubhouse. Breakfast with Champions does a Sunday service. Darian Sanders leads it. It's worship music and a sermon. And yesterday was absolutely powerful. And it just happened to work out where I was on my layover um, on my way home. And so that was really special. Here I was sitting in the airport, like crying, man. It was one of those crying moments. So I'm just in the airport. I'm eating a cinnamon cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon roll, and I'm bawling my eyeballs, eyeballs out, right? But it was good. We all need a good cry, right? When was the last time you had a good cry, man? Good cries are powerful. I don't care who you are. Right. And so that was awesome. Then as soon as I got back to Lexington, Kentucky, I put together uh, a keynote. There is a virtual event going on on March 24th. It's called Tomorrow Live, TMRW Live. You can Google that, TMRW Live, if you want to learn more about it. Uh, but it's a virtual experience. It's a future faith driven millionaires group future faith driven millionaires. And it's like doing business God's way is just different than normal business. And so uh, Janice Bryant, Hal Royd, who's the first African-American woman to build a billion dollar business. She's going to be speaking at this event. And I have been blessed to be able to speak at the event as well. 
And so I put together my my virtual keynote, came back to the studio, put that sucker together as soon as I got back into town uh, yesterday, which was great. Then I went home. And when I got home, dude, it was awesome. <laughs> so my kids always come running when dad comes home. But this time, mom, my, my wife, she jumped out of the car, right? She jumped out of the car and she came running over and she raced the kids. She like knocked the kids off to the side and she gave me a big old hug while I was still sitting in the truck, which was amazing. And then I got to see each of the kids and, and really spend some time with, with all of them, man. Cuddling on the couch with Savannah and Joel and uh, uh, Meredith and Willow and Fisher and Oakland and even my little girl, Caroline, man. So it was a great way to end the weekend spending time with my family. It was just, it was just incredible. Right. And so as I pulled up to the house to spend the time with the kids, I noticed that we had some, some grass that had been growing that wasn't necessarily growing before I left. Right. We were starting to see the seeds of spring. Things are starting to, uh, come to life. Spring is definitely in the year, in the air. Things are starting to shift a little bit. And of course, new life is beginning to emerge. And spring is always a fun and beautiful time for me. I love it. This new life is, is, is coming. It's invigorating to me. It's inspiring uh, to me. You know, the sun staying up a little bit longer. My kids were surprised that it was nine o'clock. It was still not light out, but a little bit light out. And, 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 you know, the, the sun's up longer. The planet is like invigorated. Things are waking up. Flowers are beginning to bloom. The seeds of summer are being planted in preparation for what's going to be a beautiful, beautiful season. It's like the whole world knows all of a sudden that it's time to rise and grind. You notice that the whole world knows that it's time to rise and grind. This week, we're starting a new series. We're starting a new series around those words, rise and grind. And I want to start it off by asking you the question, what does rise and grind mean to you? What does rise and grind mean to you? Go ahead and drop it in the comments on Facebook or Instagram, what rise and grind means to you. Um, what was the conference, Glenn? TMRW Live is the conference. TMRW Live. If you'd like to go get tickets for that, uh, be a part of that, I would appreciate it. TMRW Live. All right. But what does Rise and Grind mean to you? That's the question of the day. This week, we're starting this new series. And it is a series that is going to be built around these four words. Because see, to me, this is what Rise and Grind means. Rise and grind to me means rise, evolve, impact together. Those are the four words that I use to define it. I think it's important that we rise every single day with intention and purpose so that we can evolve into the absolute best versions of ourselves that we can possibly be. Ultimately, so we can go out and make an impact in other people's lives. And the best part is we get to do it together. So rise and grind to me is all about rise, evolve, impact together. I see some of you that are saying, you know, rise and grind means wake up and be ready to give a hundred percent. Rise and grind means get your butt up and go get it is what Tamika says. <laughs> she said, it means get your butt up and go Get it, right? I love it. So rise and grind means a little bit different to everybody. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What does it mean to you? So let's dive in. Before we dive in too far, though. Before we dive in too far, you know what we got to do. We got to do some dancing on this show. That's right. For those of you that know, those of you that don't know, this is the part of the show where I need you to hit that share button. That's right. I need you to hit that share button because I believe if you can change the way people start their day, it'll make a massive impact on this planet. I truly believe that. And sometimes all it takes to change the way somebody starts their day is for you to hit that share button. So on Facebook, share it out. On Instagram, share it out. On Clubhouse, hit that plus sign and drop some folks into the room. I would greatly appreciate it. This is also the part of the show where I say good morning to you 
and you say good morning to me. Whether you're watching live or you're watching on replay, maybe you're catching it on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast, wherever you are, I want you to connect with me and say what's up. Fair enough? Fair enough. Good morning, Tina Bacon. Great to see you, young lady. How you doing, Gina West? We got Vicki Everett in the house and Brad Smith. I see Gina Duffy's up in here. I also see that Justin, the mortgage loan officer, is in the house. How you doing, Solana Rich? What's up, fool around the world? <laughs> whoop, whoop. That's right. How you doing, Liza Myers? Vortis is up in here. What's up, Pam Woosley? Mr. Ray Hatcher. He says, constant fellowship, family, and a world team changing the world one day at a time by lifting each other more. I love that definition of rise and grind. What's up, Will Ramsey? How you doing, Rodney? Rock Hatfield. J.R. White's up in here. Mrs. Kim Fair. How you doing, Spencer Nicholson and Ray Hatcher? Jamie New Hoff is up in here. Mr. Andy Pratt. Christy Jewell is up in the house. Bruce Pulver, Lyndon LeBond, and then of course, over on Clubhouse, we got Tamaya and Eve. Ooh, that's a new name. I haven't seen that one. Evgenia. Evgenia is in the house. And Mayar, Leticia, Allison, Roger, Lilia, Samuel. What's up, Rashad? How you doing, Leslie? Jamar is in the house. We've got Andrea and Shannon and Omar and Latoria. August is in the house as well. We're packed over here on Clubhouse. I see Migena has made it with us today. And Laura's up on the stage, which I'm super excited about that. Mr. Ashley is up in here. Trey Congleton is in the house. I love my boy Trey. Tyson's up in here. My boy Josh Marks is in the house. Kyle, Heather, Mark, Miriam. My goodness. Packed house. What's up, Damien? Great to see you as well. Hey, listen. I'm glad you're all here with me this morning. I want to let you know that we're going to be doing something really fun to this song that you're listening to right now. We are going to do the first ever virtual flash mob. Okay? This is a virtual flash mob. Never been done before. Never. And it's going to be amazing. We are going to hit thousands of people to release the Rise and Grind dance onto TikTok and Instagram all at the same time. It's going to be spectacular. We have TikTok influencers and Instagram influencers with millions of followers that are helping coordinate this behind the scenes. So I need you to go. I want you to be a part of this. Don't miss out on this. Go to riseandgrindmob.com. Riseandgrindmob.com. Go there. Sign up. You'll get an email. We'll send you the dance. We'll send you a tutorial on how to do the dance. For those of you that are like me and can't really, not really good at that type of thing. We'll also send you a tutorial on how you load it to TikTok, a tutorial on how you load it to Instagram Reels. My friend Tamara has made this like foolproof. You can't mess it up. All right. You can't mess it up, but it's going to be so cool. So cool. We're going to blow up Tony with the keys. We're going to blow up the rising grind song. It's what we're doing this week. It launches on Friday. So I need you to go right now. All right. You're, you're going to have 60 seconds while I'm about to do the intro video, the series segue, right? I'm about to do that. So while I'm doing that, go ahead and go. You're not going to miss anything. Go to rise and grind mob.com rise and grind mob.com right now and get details about being part of the first ever virtual flash mob. It's going to be incredible. All right. With that said, let's go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? there's no excuse for you not pushing yourself to the next level in order for you to create a new you you must have a new mindset when teams come together we can create things that are greater than the sum of all of their parts
So January 6th. January 6th, 2018, I had this idea that I would go live at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking at the time. I had this little tiny area up in my house. It was in a utility closet, and there was a water heater that I put just behind the camera so no one could see that I was in a utility closet, and I took some soundproof stuff, and I put it up. This utility closet was maybe four feet wide and eight feet long, something like that, right? And I had this desk in there, and I had the camera and the water heater behind, and I had the soundproof stuff, and I had a light, right? This one of those ring lights and I popped the ring light. It was 5.30 in the morning. I woke up at like 5.25, I think. And I popped the ring light at 5.30 and I went live. And those of you that are watching the uh, the full production on Facebook, you can see that uh, I wasn't quite ready. <laughs> I wasn't quite ready to be up at 5.30 in the morning with bright lights in my face. Like it was crazy. It was horrible. It was awful. It lasted about eight minutes and it was tragic, right? The video's out there somewhere. I'm sure you could find it if you really wanted to, okay? But I had this idea to go live at 5.30 a.m. And so it's just me in a closet with a ring light, with a water heater, trying to change the world. You see, I wanted to create a safe place. I wanted to create a safe place online where people could come and not have to deal with any politics, any violence, any division. I wanted to create a safe place where people could come together of different beliefs, different backgrounds, different experiences, right? Just a safe place on the internet. The internet is not always a safe place as we all know. And so I wanted to create that. Now, I also in the midst of creating this safe place, right? This safe place that my wife, the only place she would let me do it is up in the utility closet so that I didn't wake up the rest of the house. She thought I was absolutely crazy, but not only that, but I did want to be able to market the dealership that I was working for. So at the time, I was working at Dan Cummins Chevrolet and Buick in Paris, Kentucky, the most incredible place I've ever worked in my entire life, working for the most amazing human who's now become one of my best friends, Mr. Josh Cummins. And I was working there, and I knew that we could use social media to attract new uh salespeople, management, those types of things. We could use it to attract. We could also use it for our consumers. And if we were sending out net positive out into the world, we would get net positive back, right? We could raise the reputation of the dealership and continue to enhance that. And so I used to start every day. I'd say, my name is Glenn Lundy. I'm a husband to one, a father to, let's see, back then, what was I a father to? Uh, this was January 2018. It's hard to keep track, dude. I like have kids always. Um, one, two, three. So probably five, right? Five or six. Anyways, I'm a husband to one, a father to five, and the general manager at Dan Cummins Chevrolet and Buick in Paris, Kentucky, the second largest used car franchise dealership in America. It's 5.30 a.m. And I hope you're ready to rise and ground, right? So it was great for marketing. It was great. We were creating a safe place. It was awesome marketing. First thing in the morning, planting that seed in people's head, right? And then I also wanted to create a space where people could feel seen. That was really important to me. It's important that we take the time to say good morning. It's important that Michael Guthrie knows that I see him. It's important that Janelle Griego knows that I see her. It's important that Kim Fair and Kelly Edgar and Terry LaPierre know that I see them. It's important to me that Voice by Matt knows that I see him. It's important to me that Thomas Trukley knows that I see him. It's important to me that Apex Precision knows that I see them, right? It's important to me. It's important to me that Marilyn Wilkins knows that I see her and that Claudette knows that I see her as well. It's important to me that Ryan knows that I see him and Kevin knows I see him and that Heather knows that I see her as well. It's important to me that Ronnie knows that I see him and Lucienne knows that I see her and Renee and Taylor and Kiru and Jeannie and Sandy, right? Like that's important to me. So we integrated that into every show because I want to make sure that Emily Gowler knows that I see her. So when we created Rise and Grind, it was about this safe place that also could market the dealership and also made it so that I could see you and help you to feel seen. 
You see, there was a period of my life where I felt invisible and I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. So I wanted to create that. And that was it. That was it. Safe place, market the dealership, help people feel seen. That was what Rise and Grind was created for. I had no idea it would become all of this. <laughs> I had no idea that it was going to become all of this. I mean, since then, since that first episode, I've done hundreds of other people's podcasts. I've traveled around the globe. I've been able to speak on stages. I've connected with hundreds of thousands of people through social media channels and connections. We've raised money for uh, people battling cancer. We've taken homeless people off the streets. We raised $400,000 to help battle human sex trafficking. I've been featured in magazines like Forbes magazine. I've been put in news uh, on, on news things. Like I've been on the news on NBC, ABC, CBS, all these different places. Like we have a clothing line now. We have planners now. We do live events. Like I had no idea. I had no idea that by creating hashtag rise and grind on January 6, 2018, that it would become all of this. But it did become a staple of my morning routine. And ultimately, hashtag rise and grind changed my life forever. And you see, that's what morning routines do, my friends. Morning routines transform everything in your life. Having a solid morning routine will transform the decisions you make the night before. And then they ultimately transform everything that comes after. You see, morning routines are a crucial element of your success. They are. By definition, the word rise is defined as to move from a lower position to a higher one, to come or go up, to get up from lying, sitting, or kneeling. It's defined as an upward movement, an instance of becoming higher, an increase in amount, extent, size, or number. You see, a wise person once said this, your day is pretty much formed by how you spend your first hour. Check your thoughts, your attitude, and your heart. My friend Tim Ferriss says this, if you win the morning, you win the day. Now listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Many of you tell me you don't have time to put together solid mornings routines. You gotta get the kids ready. You gotta get lunch going. You have a new baby that kept you up all night. You're a night owl. You just prefer, you You function better at night. You just can't create the time for a solid morning routine. There's too many things going on in your life. It's too busy between work and school and COVID and all of the things. And your time is so committed to serving others. And that truly is noble. It truly is noble that you want to serve others on such a powerful level. But I want to share with you this. There is a story. There is a story about the three little pigs. And you maybe heard this story once before in your life. Most people have. And in this story of the three little pigs, there's the, these three pigs that are brothers. And there's this big, bad wolf. That's on the prowl. They got, they got, they got news that the storm is coming, right? They got news. The big bad wolf is on the prowl. And so the first little pig says, you know what? I'm going to build a, a, my shelter. I'm going to build a house. I'm going to build it out of straw so I can keep the, the wolf out. And he does. He quickly builds this house out of straw and then he runs off to go play with everybody else in the neighborhood. And then the second little pig says, you know what? The big bad wolf's coming. I'm going to build my house out of wood. And so he builds his house out of wood and he takes off and he goes out. And he plays with everybody else in the neighborhood. And then the third pig says, you know what? This, this dude's bad. I'm going to build my house out of brick. And so he goes and he gets the books and he learns and he studies on how to make concrete, how to make, how to blend it perfectly. And he, he gathers the tools and he puts in the work to, to blend the concrete and lay each brick perfectly as he builds his house. He's got to make sure that it's smooth and the lines are separated. So he does some research, he studies, he takes the time to, to grow himself, his intelligence level, and he puts his house together, right? 
And now all these houses are together and the big bad wolf comes and the big bad wolf goes to the straw house and he says, open the door and let me in. And the pig says, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. And the big bad wolf says, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow the house down. And he does. And the pig goes running off, scared to death. And then he goes to the second house. The one covered made out of wood and he says let me in and the pig says not by the hair of my chinny chin chin and the big bad wolf he huffs and he puffs and he blows the house down and the second pig goes running off. Then he goes to the third house, the one built on a solid foundation out of brick. And he says, let me in. And the pig says, you ain't getting in here, sucker. And he huffs and he puffs and he blows and he cannot blow the house down. And you all know the story. A solid foundation can brace us when the storms come, which you know there's some storms coming, right? But here's the part of the story that you missed. The part of the story that you missed is that the first brother and the second brother, when their houses got blown down, if you go to the last page of your book of the three little pigs, you'll see that all three pigs are in the brick house protected from the storms. My friends, if you want to serve the people around you, the children you love, the spouses, your employees, the people that you care about, if you want to be noble and serve them, then you must build on solid foundation. You must start your day. You must put in the work because there are people in your life that will not do it. They will take the shortcuts. They will take the easy road. They won't, they won't put in the work. They wanna go play with their friends. They wanna run off and party and do all of the things. So they're counting on you. So listen to me, it is not selfish of you to create space and time for a powerful morning routine. It is a requirement of you as a servant to those that you love. You create the house, the brick house that they can find safety in. And see, in order for you to do that, you're gonna have to be intentional. You see, the best is required from you and that requires a whole lot of work. You see, we are on the backside of the biggest transformation of our lifetime. What's happened all around us has impacted every single human being. And none of us have ever experienced such an impactful event. An event that exposed our weaknesses as humanity and challenged our very existence. It proved to the universe our power and our resiliency. We cannot go back to who we were before this thing happened. We simply cannot. You did not come this far to only come this far. You see, listen to me. You are a child of God, the God of the universe, the God that made everything. And there is so much greatness in you. But in order to extract it, we must rise every single day with intention and purpose so that you can evolve into the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be, ultimately so you can make a massive impact on your friends, on your family members, on your coworkers, on everyone around you. And the great news is you don't have to do it alone. We can do this thing together. Rise, my friends, rise. Listen, if you need more videos like this, you can go to Glenn Lundy. Dot com. That's right. Head on over to glennlundy.com. You can catch more videos, more videos up in here. If we haven't connected yet, somehow, some way, you can text me. You can shoot me a text. Go to glennlundy.com. Get some information that way. Whatever's best for you. However you want to connect, let's just make sure we're connected. Fair enough? Listen, most importantly, if you want to hang out, with me over on Clubhouse. We're going to go hang out over there. We're going to talk about this a little bit longer. You can do that. Or if you want to join my elite, I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you right now, but we've got Rise and Grind Elite today. That's where we get together in a more intimate setting on Zoom, face-to-face, -face, live, me, you, and everybody else. You can go to riseandgrindelite.com. We got a session at 6.30 today. So you can go ahead and sign up for that and I'll see you there. But most importantly, Will you come back here again tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m.? Because we're going to do this all over again on hashtag Rise and Grind. Listen, my friends, if nobody's yet to tell you today, 
I want to be the first. I absolutely stinking love you. So let's get out there and get it. There's people counting on us. Fair enough? Fair enough. See you tomorrow. I'm focused on my physical, I'm developing spiritually and manifesting miracles I'm gonna get it started, have a party in the morning And I'ma wake the world, it's so alarming I hashtag rising grind